Folks, thanks for coming on today's webinar. My name is John Dubas. I'm a Vice President for Agent Success with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 45 minutes to an hour or so discussing a marketing program that works with faith-based organizations. This isn't necessarily a program where you're selling insurance to the church or the faith-based organization. It's working with the senior leadership and their congregation to help them address needs of their community. So what I want to do here is make certain that you know that today's presentation is being recorded and you will have follow-ups sent to you following today's presentation and the marketer that you've been working with will follow up with you with additional details as well. I'm going to give you a little bit of information about us here at Premier. We're a national marketing organization celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. We're part of the Integrity Marketing Program with offices across the country, and we provide insurance services to the public through independent insurance agents with contracts available directly uh, to the company with recruiting contracts available as well. This gives you an idea of the platform of partners that we have here at Integrity. I work for the Premier Marketing Group, which you have organizations throughout the country um, and a footprint there that is there to help you as well. As I mentioned, we are proud of the fact that here at Premier we are celebrating our 50th anniversary and we're one of the largest organizations in the Medicare field. Uh, the largest producer for United Healthcare, Anthem, and Meridian, and one of the largest for many of the other carriers as well. We do offer a full portfolio of insurance products, including Medicare Advantage programs, prescription drug plans, and Medicare supplement programs. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Integrity platform kicked off a rollout of two major Medicare supplement offerings this last week. If you haven't uh, heard of it, we need to get in touch with you and or reach out to your Integrity Platform partner for additional information on Lumico and Union Security. When we speak of marketing to and through faith-based organizations, we're dealing with a segment of the population that sometimes doesn't respond to other media outreach. And you run across that, across the, your experiences in marketing insurance programs where some folks, man, I just don't mail a letter back, or that's a nice TV ad, but I'm not calling a 1-800 number, or wow, it's a radio advertisement, sounds interesting, but hmm, didn't write down the number, didn't catch it, or wow, there is a uh, billboard, I'm driving though, and hmm, can we make certain that... Uh, I can write down a number without plowing into the car behind me. So there are different ways that you can obviously reach out and deal with people. But when dealing with the faith-based community, you've got a multitude of programs in your portfolio that would benefit that congregation. And if you look at different subsets of it, one of the things we're coming to right now is a period of intense scrutiny with the Medicare programs. And you have within your capabilities, an opportunity to present options, educational options on different insurance programs per se, be they Medicare supplements in general, Medicare Advantage programs in general, or in particular with one particular carrier or another. Um, and then, of course, there are also general questions about Medicare themselves. And so what you can do with a, a topic of interest is obviously fill the need for education, and create a sales opportunity as well. Additionally, with other pieces of your portfolio, this program, much like any other marketing program, its value really based is based in consistency. It's like an exercise program. If you just do it once or twice, you're going to feel the pain and not necessarily the gain. If, however, you utilize it on a regular basis, stay in front of individuals, you are more likely to make an impression and leave a thought in their mind that you are the subject matter expert for the community and you are the person they should deal with. This then includes working into other topics that um, you may make use of, such as social security planning or life insurance planning with charitable bequests or final expense programs. 
This then enables you to keep a cycle of programs in front of the community and adds value to what you bring to the table. The, the approach when it's done properly, obviously, is particularly rewarding because you're dealing with a segment of the population that can really, really benefit from what you have to offer. Um, if you think about it and you work through a, an overall annual system and you fold in life insurance programs or final expense programs, you can help sustain the financial viability of the community that you're dealing with as well. And we've all seen circumstances where with certain particularly middle or smaller sized churches, sometimes when a, a member passes away, they pass the hat to bury them and making programs like a final expense program with pre-planning services through a system such as Legacy Safeguard can really help ensure the community as well. What you really can offer, of course, when you deal with a faith-based organization is an overall review that helps the congregation ex understand what they currently have in place. It gives them peace of mind. It helps them also to deal in different factors as to is their current program still the best option for them or should they select something different. It also, because you're delivering it in a system at their church normally or at a place that the, the congregation has designated, you're dealing in a atmosphere of trust where you are basically vetted by the church itself and you are then a trustworthy source of information and it helps the audience that you're approaching feel comfortable with the, the information that you're delivering. Obviously, that trust is something that you have to basically earn, but by going through and dealing with the church leadership in order to set up such a meeting, you have, in essence, gained a piece of that trust that way as well. It also gives the congregation a means to affect change, should it be the right thing for them to do. And that basically to you translates into a sales opportunity and an opportunity to serve the people that you're dealing with. As we enter into a time period, as we approach open enrollment periods or with different special election periods that are uh, of consequence to us year round, Medicare Advantage programs can really help a lot of the congregation because if, if we look at the Medicare spectrum on the whole, we have a variance as to what programs are within reach of certain individuals to, certain, to a certain extent as well. And the Medicare Advantage programs really appeal to a large portion of the Medicare population simply because of the dollars that are involved. If you look at a median income of a Medicare beneficiary of right around $24,000, $25,000 a year, it doesn't always give them a lot of leeway to purchase a Medicare supplement plan and a PDP program as well, even if that is something they would choose to do. It may not be within uh, their financial means. Medicare Advantage programs can offer excellent program benefits for them, health benefits for them, and free up some dollars for them to do other things with them. Um, it also enables the congregation to free themselves up for other means of helping their community because they have dollars available as well. And then if you do really understand the, the concept of managed care and how it can help a person keep healthy, it helps the overall healthiness of the congregation as well. Additionally, you know, targeting different segments of the Medicare population, using Medicare supplement reviews to free up dollars, accomplishes much the same thing in, in many circumstances because it helps the overall financial wherewithal to be spread in different manners, uh, spent in different manners across the, the uh, need spectrum. When you involve life insurance in a program like this as well, it also gives a uh, it gives a congregation member an opportunity to go beyond themselves in a manner of speaking. Obviously, if you deal with final expense programs and the pre-planning process that comes with that, it does enable you to ensure a proper burial. 
Um, but also if you go into programs that uh, deal with uh, giving programs, endowment programs, it can actually fund, you can actually fund those through some different life insurance or other means of shifting assets. And it can really then make a difference on their community uh, for the foreseeable future as well. When you talk to the folks that uh, are part of the pastoral leadership of an organization, this can do a number of things for them as well. One, by vetting you, they are actually helping determine that their congregation gets the proper information and they get it from a source that is trusted, you. You earn that trust. It also then gives the congregation an opportunity to have access and this might sound a little cold-blooded, but uh, access to additional funds because they're freed up one way or another. And, and, and it also enables the congregation to contribute more to their church because the dollars are available. Um, but it also takes into account that the physical nature of a church, the upkeep of the building, the the payment of the bills, so to speak, the electricity and everything else that comes into it, it is a bit of a business in a manner of speaking as well, and making certain that you can help uh, that church remain financially viable is a, a side benefit of the program of working with them. Obviously, what it does for you as an agent it is it gives you that trusted environment to reach prospects that may not otherwise respond to other media outreach, as we've referenced before. It also gives you an opportunity to address those people in a couple of different circumstances. For folks who are comfortable with group speaking engagements, we have a number of different topics that you can use that are pre-approved that can work for you as a, a bit of a speaking track where you can address different issues for the congregation and do it as a group in a group meeting. You can, however, also set up a camp in a manner of speaking, where um, you make your services available at the location on a basis of their setting appointments to come and visit with you. So if you are comfortable with group presentations, it works really well. If you like to meet people one-on-one -on -one at the location, that would be a possibility as well. It also gives you then the opportunity to prove your worth and as you gain trust with the congregation and the leadership, you have that referral possibility just as you do in an individ in individual sales where the church leadership can speak to other organizations on your behalf and offer your services there as well. It's fairly simple in the modern world here to find locations, but this is a nice website that can help you plan your work when it comes to how do I cast my net in order to work efficiently with these organizations. Churchangel.com will give you contact information, uh, information about how the church is set up to a degree as well. And this, uh, we found uh, working the phones a little bit here is a little more efficient because if you're dealing with smaller or mid-sized churches, they may not be staffed during regular business hours on a regular basis. So sometimes otherwise, if you go door knocking, it's a little bit of a hit or a miss. And as you go through large organizations, um, you have to sometimes work your way through the periphery of who does what and where. You know, you have committee heads, you have different departments that deal with uh, working a, a social calendar within the church, and doing some groundwork ahead of time telephonically can be very useful for you. Additionally, as I mentioned, depending upon the size of the church, there may be certain segments of it that are set up specifically for the population you're looking to reach. If you're working the Medicare population, obviously, um, many of the organizations have senior groups within the community that meet on a regular basis. And many of them are looking for speakers to address them at their meetings, not in a full-blown sales presentation, but an, in, an opportunity to go and visit and inform the population of certain issues of certain solutions and of a way of reaching that ideal solution for them individually through you. There are also different larger churches that actually offer caregiver support groups. 
um, people who deal with uh, dealing with grief. Um, and that's a great way for you to have an entree into free planning services. There are also different social organizations that come out of different faith-based organizations. I used to deal with a couple of what they referred to as Romeo groups, retired old men eating out. So if you had an opportunity to visit with people in an informal setting um, as part of an adjunct from a group that's put together from their church. And many times, too, different organizations will organize activities, health fairs, uh, different types of uh, events of that nature where you have an opportunity to visit with the congregation and inject yourself into the community. Sometimes it's helpful to know what to say. And some of the things that we need to keep in mind are the fact that you're there to help them with different pieces of information through a portfolio of presentations that you have available and work your way through in essence gatekeepers within the churches as well to let them know exactly who you are what you offer and what you're looking to do and this is these presentations here the talking points will come to you and they'll give you some help as to well hey as I engage in conversation what do I say well here's it here's who I am this is what I do who handles your social calendar uh, are there a better time to reach them than another? Do you have groups that are specifically designated to deal with your senior population? Finding out information, much as you do on any other sales call, just to uncover the details of the organization that you're working with. It also is a nice way for you to all uh, reference other activities, marketing activities that you may have in the area as well. One of the things that we strongly recommend that if you work a faith-based organization or work a retail setting or with a provider or any other senior influencer within your target market, that you make them aware of each other and of your activities with each of those organizations. And it's a good way then that if you reach out to a faith-based organization and they do not have the capability or don't really want you to do a group presentation, by having marketing material available of other things that you're doing in the community, you can still actually access part of the community by leaving flyers saying, well, hey, I'm at the Walmart down the street on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 2. Here's some flyers. It'd be a good way for your folks to come and get information in a public setting in a non-threatening type of uh, atmosphere, and I'd be happy to do whatever I could for them. Keep in mind, it's not the same sort of presentation I can give on uh, a full topic, but we can deal with folks and, and their issues on an individual basis. So it's a great way for you to tie together different marketing activities and not put all your eggs in one basket. It really then allows you also to bring up different portions of your agency and what you do. Uh, most of us aren't one-trick ponies. We deal with a number of different companies in a number of different areas. And sometimes then having a conversation and finding out what the hot button is for a particular community or the individual you're speaking with can make a difference as to whether or not you actually gain entry into an organization. Uh, give them information about yourself and what you do and how that can be of value to them. We actually have a tool that we use in that circumstance that can help you with that. I'm going to pop into that in just a sec for just a second here. Here's an example of a piece that we you can use as a bit of a leave behind because there are certain circumstances as you approach a community that they may have a, a committee that deals with such types of requests and you have to go through a vetting process. Well, give them an opportunity to find out a little bit more about you. Lay in some of the information about yourself and what you offer with different pieces specifically laid out there so they can look at and realize that you have a multitude of opportunities to speak on and that you can deal with folks 
with a number of different topics, presentations that are all already created, many of them taken from CMS's Medicare Learning Network or other uh, confirmed sources for information, and it gives you then a way to speak to different topics with confidence and leave behind the information you need for them to investigate further. It's a great way for you to go through and basically mark your territory. These can be used obviously in different circumstances outside of faith-based organizations, but it is um, a great way for you to approach in these circumstances. One of the things that we see a lot of times as you go through and you approach this vetting process is, well, you're not the only insurance person in the world. I've got insurance agents within my, my church, in my community, and we don't want to cause a conflict. We don't want to uh, not deal with someone within our organization. One of the things that I would make very evident at that particular point in time is you can appreciate that fact and you're willing to work with other agents, but you're here, you're, have, you have the information available, and you want to make certain that um, the needs of the community are met. If they have agents that come to mind, visit with those agents and see if you can't work together. A lot of times when you deal with the very large churches, um, you'll have some pushback back that if you're not a member of the congregation and have been so and have been visible for a period of time, you might be the second banana in that particular root beer float. So we have to make certain that you work through the concept of it and then deal with another agent and perhaps split the business. So some different things that you can do to make certain that you gain entree into the church. I think one of the biggest things that brings about an opportunity of whether or not you're successful or not is the confidence in yourself and in the portfolio of programs that you can bring to fore for that organization. And obviously, if you've got a congregation of any size, you're going to have competition in a manner of speaking within the church. But the challenge you have is to make certain that the leadership of the church is aware of the fact that you're there, you're offering the program, you have all the components together, and if you're looking to share that information, why hasn't someone else come forward as well? Delicate matter in order to not just dump on the other person, but if it's their church, it's one of the things that we see in many circumstances as well, where a person says, I'm not comfortable selling to um, my family or my congregation. Part of that might entail a reevaluation of your commitment to what you're doing, but it also sometimes is you don't want to come across as pushy or the herb tarlic would mean the plaid jacket opening the lapel saying, hey, you want to buy a watch? Well, if you're doing uh, an action with the right intent in mind, as they say in the book of Mark, where your treasure lies, there your heart shall be, you can realize that you are giving information of value and that you're helping the overall congregation and that's the spirit in which to pursue it if you're going out there with a an intention of wow it's a sales opportunity well that's part of it yes but what you're looking to do is help the people and deliver the information in a manner that's not threatening and informational and deals with the issues that are there before them obviously as you go through these programs, sometimes it helps to have a particular initial message in mind. And what we have at this particular point in time of the year, here at the end of July, with open enrollment periods coming, sometimes it's best to approach with a future date in mind. And in those particular circumstances, saying, hey, I'm a certified agent with a number of different carriers uh, offering Medicare options to the beneficiaries in, in the area. And what I would like to do is give an informational uh, seminar for your folks on the options they have within Medicare. A bit of a Medicare 101 
with the different choices that they have to address the needs that are available. In my initial presentation, it's not a sales presentation, it's an educational event, I do not ask for or push any particular product. I go through the different options. If a person has of interest, we set up an individual uh, consultation at their convenience thereafter, or if enough people have the same sort of questions, we can schedule a second type of uh, meeting here at the church according to the feedback that we get. And a lot of times you'll see as we approach AEP, the folks will have, you know, they'll start to get their ANOC letters or the advertisements start coming on television and radio and they have the questions, but they're not responding to TV or, or radio. They want someone else to help them. This gives them the venue to do that. Also, at that particular point in time, what you'll find is many people will say, well, that's great, but I need some activity now, too. What you're doing in those circumstances then is using the Medicare review for the future and then rolling off of it and saying what we're finding with a lot of the Medicare population midway through the year is their their dollars are pressed. They become financially uh, in a bit of a bind. And one of the things that we do is we offer informational programs on different entitlement or subsidy programs that are available to the population. And we can actually do a presentation on the extra help program, the low income subsidy, the assistance for medication programs. And we have a great program on Medicare savings plans. These are MSP programs that folks will qualify for based on income and assets that may help them with the claims they have within the healthcare system they are already utilizing. So you have options then of also not only creating events in the future, but creating a shorter timeline of a, a more immediate and pressing need that you can help address as well. And in all honesty, there are so much publications and, and publicity going on about all the different healthcare changes and without getting into political discussions, uh, it's forefront in most people's mind and having some information on how to deal with current circumstances can really set you apart. One of the things that certain organizations will do as well is use your information programs as part of their outreach into the community. Because keep in mind, much as what we have a mission in life to sell insurance or uh, make certain that we're helping people with the programs that we offer, is the faith-based organizations have their own outreach and their own need to positively influence the com community and you then become a reference and a asset to them for that effort. So creating these type of presentations may not only give you the opportunity to visit with that congregation, but also that immediate community if that is in the scope of the programs that the faith-based organization offers as well. Obviously, one of the things that we have to overcome is for folks that have a challenge uh, with sales within the church. Well, what you're doing is you're delivering information and you're not selling. Make certain that they realize that folks have the opportunity to reach out and address their needs should they choose to do so, but you don't pursue sales on the meetings at the church. You're looking to make certain that you're delivering uh, the information and then follow up is handled either individually in their homes or uh, another venue at their convenience or should the demand be there, a, a second opportunity at the church. It's also important to make certain that you leverage the, finger quotes working here, publicity that's available through the church itself. Um, many organizations will actually announce such events from the pulpit during the sermon or homily. Um, many of the churches have their own publications, uh, bulletins that they utilize on a weekly basis. There are some folks here that are still paper people, and that's an opportunity with an insert there. Um, notifications in the vestibule, 
many churches now too, a vast majority of them have their own websites and utilizing electronic means of reaching into the community there with their own access to different pieces of the social media can help drive your attendance. And that's one of the reasons why you want to work with an organization like this. Outside of delivering the help, it's an opportunity to reach people that won't respond to other sorts of outreach to, to visit with them. As I mentioned, we have a number of different presentations that are available for use in a group setting, particularly helpful. One-on-one um, -on -one settings, they can be used as well. Obviously, these are intended or designed more for reaching out to a, a type of seminar or group presentation type of setting. But you have a number of topics that deal with Medicare either as a whole with the different options and explanation over the overall programs, um, different subsets of benefits that are available under the Medicare programs, such as the Advantage programs, the Medigap plans, the Part D programs, the different uh, entitlement programs that I mentioned earlier, the low income subsidy and Medicare savings plans, so the helps for drugs or medical costs. There's also a presentation that the CMS has recently released that deals with going from um, ACA type of programs to Medicare programs. And these are all PowerPoints that have been developed by the government in many circumstances or by a carrier that have been vetted and are compliant. So we stay within the guidelines that are given to us by diff the government and the carriers and, and the MIPA legislation. Uh, the final expense presentation through Legacy Safeguard is a great non-threatening way to have folks plan for the future, for the inevitable. And it basically can walk you through a process to determine what dollars are necessary to meet that final expense, which turns into a sales opportunity on an uh, individual basis. And then, of course, different uh, presentations to deal with charitable bequests. You know, when I'm gone, I want to leave uh, some money or some assets or something to the church as in the form of a memorial, a bit of a legacy that I'm creating. And there are presentations designed to help you do that. As I mentioned before, a big piece of this is consistency. Rotating topics throughout the year. This is a great way to start, though, because you have an opportunity to do things now. And you have an opportunity to set a calendar of events for the future as well. Probably the best time of the year to do it. On a, on a rotating basis because when you go in there you're visiting obviously about upcoming events the choices they'll have between um, the marketing period starting October 1st and the sales period of October 15th through Pearl Harbor Day but you also have a time period on a the cycle of life here so to speak where different topics come to fore and setting some things up on an ongoing basis not only helps you, but it helps the congregation um, with regular events and makes certain that you're able to rotate through different pieces that you can become comfortable with. If you are dealing with Medicare topics, however, it is important that you stay compliant and that you work with the carriers or your contracting organization to make certain the events are filed properly. One of the things that we have seen with the Medicare marketing guidelines that came out were some proposed changes to educational events that would allow you to collect demographic information for follow-up. Um, that's not through yet though, so we have to make certain that as we go through these and to be as efficient as possible is to make certain that we file them as sales events so we can distribute different pieces of material much more easily including our contact information, and make available a sign-in sheet should they choose to. You can't require it. Sign in for additional follow-up. Preparation is a key, obviously, as well, making certain that if you are working through different presentations that you're comfortable with what you are speaking to and the, the delivery of such that you're giving. There is also the need to work with your particular contracting organization or a particular carrier to make certain that you have the, the lovely little tchotchkes or the giveaways or the presentation material available and organized so your event comes off very effectively. Um, part of creating the relationship with the community is working with 
the leadership of that church or the organization that has a designated key person and creating a relationship and using them and leveraging uh, the different resources that they have available to market the event and to do it in the manner in which you've agreed to with the church leadership. So creating that plan and then following through with it, obviously conducting a presentation and doing the ever present and ever needed follow up, not only with the folks that came to your presentation, but also with the people that you've worked with to stage the event and the church leadership to give them a synopsis of what you um, have done and what you intend to do in the future. You got, a, as I mentioned, a full portfolio of products for you to offer um, throughout the Medicare world, life insurance and final expense, short long-term care, ancillary products is a great topic right now. Speaking to different dental programs, to different uh, critical illness programs. Um, for those of us who have been touched by cancer, it's an important topic that becomes a bit of your vision, your mission, in order to help people deal with um, some challenges that isn't normally recognizable uh, for a lot of folks. We tend to put our head in the sand and say, hey, won't happen to me. But you got a ton of topics then that you can speak to and address. You've got some easy ways of making certain that you are contracted with the carriers to help deliver those products. And you have a ton of trainings out there that are available to you. Additional webinars such as this one, staged by our organization or our sister companies. There are a ton of carriers that offer different programs on an ongoing basis that are very valuable to you. Sometimes you kind of get a feeling of, man, another training. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, man, I don't want to talk to Humana again. It's United Healthcare is always sending me stuff. Well, there's some things of value. There's, you know, nuggets in that pile of sand that uh, we sometimes have to dig through. And even if you are becoming involved in different retail programs, diving into some of that training will help you deal with marketing in a venue such as this because some of the same tenants follow through different uh, avenues, different venues that you go to and access. Um, making certain that you stay up to date on the different assistance programs working in the Medicare world is a huge value to you. If you haven't noticed, a whole bunch of carriers are chasing the dual special needs plans very, very vehemently and knowing what these different programs offer and what is entailed in order to qualify for them can make a huge difference. And in many circumstances, it's part of the mission of the church to deal with the less fortunate. You having the information on programs that can help in that effort can make a huge difference as well. Um, become very acquainted with the Medicare supplement quote engines, because if you're going to do a presentation in that fashion, you can also obviously use that as a presentation, just a demonstration of the quote engine. And now you're able to offer complimentary Medicare supplement reviews. So this isn't all just entailed on Medicare Advantage or dealing with the lower income people. Um, the folks that have Medicare supplements need help too. And there's no one right answer for anybody anyway. This is a great way to leverage in uh, a approach for all segments of the Medicare community. Utilizing the Medicare Learning Network, it's our kind of reference before, it's where we get a lot of our presentations. Uh, it's a great way for you to stay up to date as to different changes and how things are rolling and making certain that you're offering the most up-to-date material as well. And the government has done a really good job of updating some of their websites. And so mymedicare.gov, uh, is a great way to work through and help people access their benefits and you to become more familiar with the workings of such machinery as well. In many circumstances, you know, the old saying is when all is said and done, more is said than done. Well, if you are interested in working with the faith-based community, we have different programs that can help you become more engaged. But you've got to determine if that is part of oh, your overall marketing plan. Is it one of the eggs you're going to place in the basket? Is it be, to become part of your personal mission? 
If it is, make certain that you do your homework, prepare for what you need to do with the, uh, with the approach, and then do it. It's the old Nike saying, just do it. Procrastinating is a, uh, well, you know, there's always tomorrow. Not really. Sometimes you just have to do things, and this is the opportunity for you to take something of a component that's going to be part of you and move forward and make it a valuable part of an overall marketing program. This is the information for our premier office here in Dallas at 1-800-365-8208. We'll get you in touch with any of the premier marketing team. It's also an opportunity for you if you're working with one of our sister organizations for us to make certain that you are dealing with the folks you're comfortable with and that are part of your upline situation. We'd like to be part of it. We also want to make certain we accommodate you properly. These are some additional contact information for the different teams out of our home office with Premier. And obviously you can access a whole bunch of our information through the joy of the internet. Um, but I want to thank you for coming on the line with us today. Watch for some of the information that we'll be following up with you. You will receive a link to the recording to today's presentation. You will also get a PDF of the presentation itself. I'm gonna send you that whole, here's my lead behind piece with my information in it. Um, these are gonna to come to you in PDF formats because it makes it smaller and it's easier to get through the servers and I don't get uh, pulled out of into spam filters nearly as much. Um, but keep in mind that this information, um, we can help you create your own version of it so you can use it as a piece of your personal approach, your personal marketing program, and help you um, become cognitive of some of the different options you have there to be the subject matter expert for your chosen market. That said, I want to thank you for coming on the line with us today. Uh, we're a little shorter than a 45 minutes. So I I have a little more caffeine in my system than I usually do, so I want to thank you for coming on the line with us today. We look forward to speaking with you in the near future, and we wish you good selling. Thanks.